My name is Jane and I'm living in this tree house this summer. I'm Trevor. We originally wanted to build a tiny house. It turns out having a tiny house is pretty expensive and to get a tiny build a tiny house we'd have to buy a truck that could tow it from the east coast up to here and then we'd want to be mobile so then tow it back down. So the cost of having a trailer, house, truck that could pull it ended up being a little too much, but we still wanted to have a little something up here um, where we had our own place to live. Two months from clearing to, to starting to build. The first wall got put up September 22nd maybe. We are at the point of the platform was done and we were ready to pull up walls. Got the roof on and finished on October 16th at about 9 p.m. and it started to snow that day at about 7 p.m. and I'm up in the in the roof and since it's a tree house it's a long it's already like we're 20 feet off the ground and then I'm on the roof so I had this rope system set up so I was hanging from a rope finishing up the roof at night with the light up there as it was starting to snow. It's been great it's been pretty warm stayed dry it's been pretty rainy this last week. Very cozy. Breakfast in the morning and when it hasn't been raining and sitting and looking at Res Peak and the view of the mountains it's not a bad life. So to start off with, we have a nice covered porch because we were talking earlier about uh, the design process and how kind of I worked through it as I went. And I was trying to figure out how to get the snow not accumulating in the winter on the deck. And one of the guys was like, just build a roof over it. So now we have a little covered section, which right now is housing the stuff that has to go in, like our windows and our stove. Then for our deck, we have a nice little space for enough for a couple people. A big part of it is it's a tree house, so it can only handle so much weight. So it's nice. It's the perfect size deck, I think. We can't fit too many people, so we can't collapse it. And hopefully pretty soon we'll put some railings up for safety. Yeah, I think railings might be windows, <laughs> electricity. There's some things, but we're going to have some uh, railings because it is about 22 feet down. So we want to get to the point where we're going to stay dry and we could be kind of warm. So literally the first thing that we did this summer in Seward or in Alaska is we bought a wood stove on the drive down from Anchorage. I drove up from New York, picked her up in Anchorage, then we drove back up to Palmer, picked up a wood stove from Craigslist, drove down and put it in that next morning. So we only had one night without heat and then we're dry and warm. We don't have running water or electricity. We have heat at least, uh, but the, the roughing it, the kind of glorified camping, which is living in the treehouse right now as it's under construction, it's it's not bad for us. We're yeah, kind of used to it. Yeah, not too bad. And we're only three miles from town and spend most of our day at the office and in town. So Our offices have showers in them, yeah. so that's pretty good. <laughs> showers and kitchens. You also were, in a way, designing as you were building. Don't you think? I was definitely designing as I was building. Like the platform was done without knowing what the actual structure was gonna look like. I I didn't know how tall the ceilings were gonna be. I knew the the footprint of it, but I didn't know how high it was gonna be, what the roof design was gonna be. Uh, I'd literally just after getting done working on the platform, I'd come home and I'd make little sketches and be like, oh this looks good. Uh, I like this a little better and uh, get input from some of my friends show the, <laughs> the drawings to Jane. And so I literally was at home making 3D cardboard models. And be like, Jane, what do you think of this? Um, and she goes, well, I don't know about that. And I redesign it and then this is all while I was building. The second thing that we put in when we got here after the wood stove was a door. Over winter it was just four by eight sheet of plywood nailed to the wall. So we actually have a door now. Now we're working on our window as well. So we haven't actually put a window in yet, but we've cut the holes in all the spots where the windows are gonna be have been framed out already. We just have to cut them out and put them in. How many windows are you gonna put in? One, two, three, four, five, six. Twice as many as originally anticipated. Yeah. I really wanted a lot of light because I like really bright places, so I pushed for more windows and got Trevor to double the number of windows he originally planned for. And my thought was, we're only here in the summer, there's tons of light, we only need three windows. 
But we went to Lowe's and they had a whole bunch of windows that were returns. So we got like three windows for 45 bucks each or something. Yeah, and we ended up, or Trevor ended up sort of designing and framing the house around the windows that we bought on sale, including this cool octagon shaped window that we have up top here. So the first thing, this isn't part of it yet, but there was an old hemlock. We actually counted the rings and it's about 120 years old, but it died for a good cause. It helped support the center of the structure. So it is a 24 foot span between this main tree and the two trees on that side of the tree house. And this guy underneath um, is supporting the middle. So it's, it's actually a super helpful tree and it is going to turn into, we're gonna cut it off and make it flat and then it's gonna turn into a table, our evening table. And we'll be able to sit here looking at one another and have dinner. Eventually this will become a problem, but that's very far down the line, so I'm not worrying about it yet. Um, it is a hemlock and they last a really long time. They're a pretty rot resistant tree. So if it was a sick of spruce, I would have just cut it all the way off. But since it's a hemlock, we're gonna keep it. And actually it was, this was probably the most unexpected thing when we were building the tree house. So I climbed this by hand with a bow saw and went up and limbed this tree to about 40, 45 feet up with leaving the lowest level of branches. So in case I fell, there'd be at least a little bit something to, to stop my fall. So I went up and limbed it till it was about this big in diameter until I didn't feel comfortable with it supporting me anymore. And one of the owners of our companies had told me before that, like, oh, why don't you keep that tree? If you go up and limb it, then I'll cut it down for you. And uh, he wasn't being serious, but I went up and limbed it. And so then he didn't have a choice because he is a man of his word. Um, so right here, this level is about 18 feet off the ground. So he was up on a ladder with a chainsaw, cutting down this tree overall was about 60, 65 feet high, um, and cutting it 18 feet off the ground. So that, that was pretty exciting to watch, and I'm glad I wasn't the one up on the ladder with the chainsaw cutting this big tree off. <laughs> this is where we have our kitchen set up for now. I don't really know why we chose this side, because I think, I think ultimately we're going to have the kitchen and the stove over here. So we do actually have sort of a makeshift temporary sink right here, but we were thinking kitchen on this side, um, maybe a little living area with a chair right here, and uh, like Trevor was saying, have a dining room table-esque thing right here in front of the window. Pretty much everything down here except for the wood stove is just a temporary mm -hmm. something because we do have to insulate the walls and put on our inner walls. Um, the other temporary thing we have is a, is, a, is a makeshift ladder right here, which is how we get to the loft right now, <laughs> which is just some piece of scrap, scrap wood, even a branch up there for a limb. But I think ultimately we might put the ladder and to get up to the loft in this corner and cut out a little hole right here, which is this, the floor of the loft. So that'll be pretty cool if we end up doing that. So we're gonna use foam, two inch foam insulation for between the roof joists, um, just so we don't have to deal with the messiness that is fiberglass insulation. Also, it's a pretty small cabin, so it's um, 16 by 12. So it's, it's not a lot of volume to heat up for wood. So we're going for fairly light insulation. Um, there will be fiberglass in the walls, but the foam is for the ceiling. What are you gonna do for water? It's a great question. It's a really good question. Um, right now we just have these blue tanks right here. We might end up using that for quite a while. Just have a tank of water and use that for washing dishes. Um, the owner of our business who lives in the cabin the same size has been using those same blue containers for about eight years. I yeah. Think. Yeah. With the five gallon bucket under his sink that he has to go outside and empty. One of the one of the things that we've talked about for a while is having some sort of gravity fed water water system, um, and putting a really big water tank up top because the driveway is so much higher than the house is right now, and somehow having some tubes coming down from that. That would be pretty awesome. And maybe an outdoor shower outside of the deck. We're definitely having an outdoor shower <laughs> off of the main support tree here. We were talking about Jared the other night, whose dad is working with this guy, Jack. Jack is putting in a sand point, or just put in a sand point well, which is a shallow well that goes around 20 to 30 feet deep. 
in areas with a high water table and sandy soil. And I think at the bottom of our hill here, we can put in a sandpoint well and then have actual running water. We just have to go get it tested and then pumped up the hill. Do so you plan on doing an outhouse out here? Yeah. Yeah, plan on doing an outhouse hopefully in the next few days so we can get that get that in use. I started digging the hole yesterday and then I hit a rock which is way too large to move. So we have to rethink where it's gonna be. <laughs> Pretty simple though, simple and small in structure. One of Yen, the owner of the company uh, who has the same size cabin, he has a friend down in Wenatchee, uh, Washington, who has a tree house that he built for his kids and he's a commercial fisherman and likes building stuff. So he built a pretty big tree house for his kids and he used these bolts. Um, so Ryan told us about them and what it is, it's a one inch thick by seven inches deep into the tree and then it has a three inch basically collar on it that is the main weight supporting area so the tree house has two on this main tree and then one each on those trees that's a floating system so these two are fixed so this tree is fixed and those two float so as they grow it's able to push outwards um, and as the wind flexes the trees they're actually on rollers over there so the whole thing move a little bit. To get it lined up for these slots, because there's a metal plate that goes inside, there was a lot of work with the sawzall and then just filing the inside of it to get it perfect. And then to actually get the beams up was super challenging. So it's the main three beams that run lengthwise are 12 by 12 inch by 4 inch by 24 foot pressure treated beams. So we had Jane, myself, and three other guides carry them down the hill. They weigh about 330 pounds each. And then we actually had beam across where this tree is here that we cantilevered out onto that beam and then slid it the rest of the way. So that was the only time that we had that many people working on it. Um, for raising the walls, we had four of us at one point. And this main cross beam, we actually, Jane and I did it all on our own um, with, the, with the help of my truck. So I had a rope tied to it and an anchor up in the tree and Jane directed me as I drove that way and it pulled the beam up because that beam weighs it was like 270 pounds or something and it's 15, 16 feet up there so we used some mechanical help. So this is our loft area, so basically our bedroom. So we got a bed just a few days ago, which was pretty sweet. And as you can see, a lot of other clothes and, and gear that is not yet organized. But uh, we did get this nice cube organizer yesterday, which helps. But it's pretty spacious. And we're thinking about rearranging the bed a little bit, maybe putting it over here. Trevor built in a dormer on the side, so we can stand up, or at least I can stand up, all the way to the wall right here and there'll be a window. So no, I could stand. I designed it specifically <laughs> at the height so I could go right to the edge and stand up. Mm -hmm. Luckily neither of us are really tall. Yeah. It's designed around our heights. Yeah. Right in here we currently don't have our gangplank but we're going to have a little beam that goes across for Jane and I and then since it's limited space, a little over 300 square feet, we have to put our clothes somewhere so we're going to have our clotheslines over in here so we can hang up you know, a lot of puffy coats and like the big bulky things and sleeping bags and a lot of our camping gear will just be hanging in this open space here. Does it get pretty toasty up here with the, with the stove downstairs? Yeah, you can feel the warm air coming right up behind the wall here, which is nice. Yeah, without any insulation even, so once we get the insulation in, it should be pretty nice. Like when we go to sleep, it's really toasty, but then when we wake up, it's pretty cold. Uh, but that will change in the next 
couple days maybe. <laughs> I may put the bed right here and then have the ladder or the entrance of the loft in that corner perhaps. Yeah, we're definitely at the point where we're just going to try to figure out how much room we have and how much stuff we have and figuring out organizational techniques um, to, to get that all in. Uh, luckily, Jane is super organized. Um, her nickname at the shop is actually the Meticulous Marmot. So while I might have been better at the, the big picture designing of things and the building of things, when it comes to the interior work and trying to make sure that we have an efficient flow of space and we're able to fit everything in, that's where you come in. I think a big motivation for me and for Jane was that we want to have a little space of our own, but in Seward, rent is super expensive. So for $1,200 a month, we could live in a space that's this big. Or for $35,000 altogether, we could have an acre of property, which is a decent investment here just because Seward's a kind of up and coming town, and have our own house that we call our own. We can design it however we want, we can make it all our own. So when it comes down to it economically, it's I think a really good decision and if you could be your own landlord and design whatever you want instead of paying somebody else rent, um, it's a good investment and you have control over where you live and you make it whatever you want.